Chapter 3 is on the nature of graphs, and the first section is talking about symmetry. Uh, so a point of symmetry is two distinct points, A and B, are symmetric with respect to point M, if and only if M is the midpoint of AB. Point M is symmetric with respect to itself. So when we talk about symmetry, we want to think about things kind of being folded onto themselves and matching up perfectly. So for example, on this line, if I have two points A and B, if I were to fold this half of the line onto this half, where my crease would be at point M, then A and B should match up perfectly, meaning that M is the midpoint of AB. The same thing here, this graph has symmetry um, over this line, whereas if I were to fold this half of the graph on this half, they should match up perfectly. So those are some examples of symmetry. A figure is symmetric to a given point if it can be rotated at 180 degrees about that point and appear unchanged. The origin is the most common point of symmetry. So let's look at two examples here. I gave you two graphs and what we want to look at is um, a table of value for these graphs and what's happening with the actual graph. So if I pick some values for x, 1, 2, 3, and 4, plug them in to x cubed. So that's going to be 1, 8, 27, 64. Now what if I make the value of x negative and plug it in? Negative 1 cubed is negative 1, negative 8 2 cubed is negative 8, negative 3 cubed is negative 27, and negative 4 cubed is negative 64. And then the last column is asking me to take this f of x and now just multiply it by negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, 8 will become negative 8, 27, negative 27, and 64, negative 64. So what we see here is these two columns give us the same values, meaning f of negative x is the same as f of x. The same thing is going to happen with this function over here. 1, 2, 3, and 4 are my values I'm going to plug in for x. That's going to give me 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth. When I plug in negative values for x, negative 1 becomes negative 1, negative 2 becomes negative 1 half, negative 3, or negative 1 third, and then negative 4 becomes negative 1 fourth. Again, if I just take the values from f of x and multiply them by negative 1, I get negative 1, negative 1 half, negative 1 third, and negative 1 fourth. So again, f of negative x here equals negative f of x. So I have two graphs for which this is true. And when I look at these graphs here, this is the graph of um, x cubed on the left. If I look at the origin here, if I were to take this graph and first flip it across the y-axis, so it would look like this, and then flip it across the x-axis, it would, it would result in itself. It would be reflected upon itself. The same thing here. If I were to flip this graph over the x-axis, it would look like this. And then if I were to flip it over the y-axis, it would land on itself. So that is, being, that is called being symmetric with respect to the origin. So you're basically reflecting across both axes, which makes um, the origin your point of symmetry. And this is true for graphs that have f of negative x equal to negative f of x. So, um, oops, let me scroll up. There we go. Uh, symmetric with respect to the origin. A function has a graph that is symmetric with respect to the origin if and only if f of negative x equals negative f of x for all values of x in the domain of f. So without even graphing then, we can determine whether or not a function is symmetric to res with respect to the origin. So first example here, x, of, uh, x to the fifth. So we want to say does f of negative x equal f negative f of x? So f of negative x is going to be negative x to the fifth. Anything, any negative number to the fifth power, because it's odd, will be negative x to the fifth. Negative f of x means I'm going to say take negative, take f of x and make it negative. 
So whatever x to the fifth is, I'm going to multiply it by negative 1. And so I can see f of negative x does equal negative f of x. So this is symmetric to, with respect to the origin. Yes. How about g of x? g of negative x is going to be negative x over 1 minus negative x, which will be negative x over 1 plus x. Negative g of x is I'm going to take a negative 1 and multiply it by g of x. This is a negative 1 out front. It only multiplies in once, so this will be negative x on the top and 1 minus x on the bottom. Those are not the same, so this does not have um, symmetry with respect to the origin. So why don't you try these two? Um, test out the functions. This one should not be. This one should be. So see if you get those, those answers. Pause the video and do those, and then come back when you're ready. Okay, two points A and B are symmetric with respect to a line if and only if the line is perpendi a perpendicular bisector of AB. A point P is symmetric to itself with respect to a line if and only if the point is on the line. So what you want to think about is a function being folded across certain lines. Um, very common lines would be the line um, x equals 0, y equals 0, y equals x, y equals negative x. So if you think about a function being folded on itself across a line and the two halves matching up exactly, um, then it has symmetry across a line. Some functions can have symmetry across several lines. So for example, an ellipse here, if I fold this across the x-axis, it's still going to fold on itself and match up perfectly. I can also fold it on the y-axis and it will fold on itself. Um, so there can often be more than one line of symmetry um, for certain graphs. Alright, so I have a chart here for us um, to talk about different lines of symmetry. So the first one being the x-axis. Um, if something is symmetric across the x-axis, then the points x and y and x and negative y will be produce the same results. So if I look at this function here, I have the point 2 root 6 and the point 2 negative root 6. So I've made the y value negative. If I were to fold this graph along the x-axis, it would fold onto itself having symmetry. If I were to plug those two points into this function, I would get the same values out. For the y-axis, um, for the point x, y, you should be able to plug in negative x, y and produce the same result. So for example, this graph can be folded in half over the y-axis. I have negative 2, 8, making the x value negative, and x and y, 2 and 8, they should produce the same value within the function. The line y equals x is this line right here through the origin with a slope of 1. So notice when I fold that function onto itself, both halves of these graphs are going to line up and, and match. Um, so if you notice here, the two points that would match up would be the point 2, 3, and then the point 3, 2. So I've just switched the x and y values. And finally, the line of y equals negative x goes through the origin with a slope of negative 1. Looks like that. So if I notice when I fold it onto itself, the points that would match up would be 4, negative 1, and 1, negative 4. So I've taken a point x and y, I've swapped it to be y and x, and I've made them both negative. So both those values plugged into the function should give, um, should give the same value. So we can use these rules to determine whether or not a function is symmetric to an axis or, or one of the lines. So um, we are going to take the function x squared plus y equals 3, and I'm going to test um, test all these points to, to see where my symmetry is. So if I have x-axis symmetry, then for the point x, y, I should be able to plug in x negative y and get the same function being this. So when I do that, I plug in x, and then I'm going to plug in negative y equals 3. 
That is not the same function, so there's no symmetry around the x-axis. What about the y-axis? To, to test the y-axis, I'm going to plug in the point negative x, y. These are the points that are listed in this chart, so if you need to look back at that, you can. When I plug these into the function, I'm going to have negative x squared plus y equals 3. Negative x squared is going to be positive x squared plus y equals 3. That is the same value, so there is symmetry around the x-axis. There can be symmetry in more than one place, so we need to keep going. What about the line y equals x? To test that, I'm going to plug in the point y, x. So for everywhere I see x here, I'm going to put a y, so it'll be y squared plus x equals 3. That is not the same equation, so there's no symmetry there. And then we want to test y and negative x. I'm going to plug in negative y, negative x. This will be negative y squared minus x equals 3, which will be y squared minus x equals 3. So again, no symmetry there. So the only place there is symmetry for this function is across the y-axis. So I would like you to try one on your own as well. Um, try this one. You should get symmetry along the line y equals x, but you need to test all four um, and, and see, see what you get for those. Okay, finally, the last thing we want to talk about are even and odd functions. So functions whose graphs are symmetric um, to the y-axis, this should say, sorry, cross that off, typo, y-axis, um, are even functions, and functions whose graphs are symmetric about the origin are odd functions. So we have some examples here. Even functions um, are uh, described by this notation, f of negative x equals f of x. Um, so they are, often you can tell, well, they're symmetric across the y-axis, so if you look, you can always fold them across the y-axis, they will fold onto themselves. Another way you can tell even functions is the their graphs enter and leave on the same, um, the same side of the x-axis, so you see they, they both enter and leave up top here. Odd functions are symmetric with respect to the origin, so if I were to take this graph, and flip it across y and x, I'd end up with the same function. Across y and x, I'd be the same function. Odd functions also enter on one side of the x-axis and leave on the other. Enter on one side, leave on the other. So that's another way you can, um, you can recognize those. Um, but something to note, and um, we will be ready to do some examples in class tomorrow.